Today is Wednesday, August 21st. We'll recap the latest from the Democratic National Convention, including speeches from the Obamas and a couple of Republicans who worked in the Trump White House. Also, America's updated nuclear strategy and where Gaza ceasefire negotiations stand now. Plus, scams job hunters are being warned about, a surprising link between video games and mental health, and why you might notice QR codes on some helmets this college football season. Those stories and even more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Vice President Kamala Harris got a lot more big-name support at the Democratic National Convention. Last night's top headliners were former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama, who both praised Harris and criticized former President Donald Trump. Former President Obama spoke specifically about the decency of Harris and her family and said old-fashioned values will beat out fear and division. And the former First Lady seemingly tried to paint the Republican nominee as out of touch with most American people, pointing out how Trump was born into a wealthy family and suggesting he didn't have to work as hard for success. Both Obamas also warned supporters to brace for a tough fight ahead, saying they'll need to keep the momentum and channel all their energy into getting out the vote in November. Earlier in the night, the descendants of two other former presidents spoke. The grandsons of both former President John F. Kennedy and former President Jimmy Carter addressed the crowds, saying Harris is the best leader to carry out the visions and values of their grandfathers. The crowds also heard from Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, who shared the more personal side of the VP. Several Republicans even took the stage. For example, Trump's former press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, who said her old boss, quote, has no empathy, no morals and no fidelity to the truth and said Harris is honest and has her vote. Of course, the DNC is not over yet. Today, the Democratic vice presidential nominee, Tim Walz, is set to take the stage, as well as former President Bill Clinton and several other speakers. We'll, of course, bring you the highlights right here on The Newsworthy. Vice President Kamala Harris actually was not at the Democratic National Convention last night. Instead, she rallied thousands of voters in a packed arena in Wisconsin, actually the same area where the Republican National Convention was held last month. While she was there, the vice president told the crowd she was running a people-powered campaign. Meanwhile, Trump spoke to a law enforcement crowd in Michigan, where he said Harris will, quote, deliver crime, chaos, destruction, and death if she's elected, whereas he said he would, quote, deliver law, order, safety, and peace. Up next, the former president is going to North Carolina today and then the U.S.-Mexico border in Arizona on Thursday. Stay tuned. For the first time, we're hearing about a new nuclear strategy President Biden reportedly signed off on months ago. The New York Times reported on a classified document that says the president ordered American forces to prepare for coordinated nuclear challenges from Russia, China and North Korea. Now, that's different from in the past when it apparently seemed less likely that American adversaries would work together. But the new policy takes into account a fast buildup of China's nuclear arsenal, Plus, how North Korea has expanded its nuclear arsenal and helped supply at least conventional arms to Russia lately. The White House confirmed the Times report, saying Biden approved the plan earlier this year. But it says it wasn't actually a response to any single country or threat. An unclassified version of this plan is expected to go to Congress before Biden leaves office. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken just wrapped up his ninth visit to the Middle East since the war in Gaza began. But once again, he left without a breakthrough for a ceasefire that might have ended the 10-month war. The Biden administration still says it's optimistic about a solution, but Israeli and Hamas officials say they see little hope for a deal anytime soon and that major disagreements are mostly unresolved. Negotiations have become more urgent ever since Hamas's political leader was assassinated. And making matters worse, this week, Israeli officials say they recovered the bodies of six more hostages who have been held captive by Hamas. One of Israel's main sticking points in ceasefire negotiations is getting hostages home alive. But yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told hostages' families a ceasefire deal may not be reached. The U.S., as well as other mediators, Egypt and Qatar, have called for another round of talks soon. But so far, a date for that meeting has not been set. For the first time since 2020, the U.S. birth rate has fallen, and now it's hit a record low. And that means there are fewer babies being born now compared to previous years, and the overall fertility rate is down as well. 
A new CDC report says the birth rate fell 2% last year as compared to the year before. And that marks a return to a general trend that was happening in the decades before the COVID pandemic. Experts say there's no single reason the birth and fertility rates have fallen. But things like people getting married and having kids later in life, along with broader socioeconomic changes, play a role. It's also worth noting that same CDC report says of the women who are still getting pregnant, more are going through pregnancy without any prenatal care. Now, experts say many doctors specializing in the field are either leaving states with abortion restrictions or aren't going there in the first place. Also, many of those same states decided not to expand Medicaid coverage, which has also had an impact on women who might not be able to afford prenatal care without it. Doctors stress the importance of consistent care during pregnancy as it helps lead to better outcomes for both the mother and child. To hear more about the declining fertility rate and what impacts fertility overall in women and men, check out our special edition Saturday episode from this past weekend. All right, we have more news for you still coming up. But first, a quick break to talk about our sponsor, Quince. I'm always super impressed looking at all the cute options from Quince. It has everything I need or want from washable silk tops to linen pants to cashmere sweaters from $50, even luggage for my next vacation. So I know as I shift my wardrobe from summer to fall, Quince offers everything I need with timeless and high-quality items, ensuring my wardrobe stays up-to-date and I don't blow my budget. Because all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. So I love that. I can feel good when I shop with Quince, and I also feel good in their clothes. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high-quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash newsworthy for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash newsworthy to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash newsworthy. This episode is also brought to you by Skims. It's such a great feeling to relax on a weekend night, especially after we put our kiddo to bed. But I was realizing my boring shorts and t-shirt were just not meeting the moment. Enter Skims Soft Lounge Sleep Set. The second I put it on, I feel cute, cozy, and ready for the type of relaxation I deserve. I love that it matches, that the fabric is super soft, and that I just feel great in it. It feels like a luxury, and yet it's so simple. The same can be said about my soft lounge long slip dress. I can throw it on for a night out on the town or keep it casual while on the go. And either way, I feel confident and comfortable. Everything I get from Skims always feels so great right out of the bag, probably the softest items I own. And they all hold up wash after wash, too. Shop the Skims soft lounge collection at skims.com. Now available in sizes extra extra small to 4X. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know I sent you. After you place your order, select The Newsworthy in the survey and select my show in the drop-down menu that follows. Okay, now back to the news. Some good news for gamers. A new study suggests playing video games may actually improve mental health. Researchers looked at nearly 100,000 people in Japan from the year 2020 to 2022 and found those who played video games were generally happier and more satisfied with life. The study came about almost as an accident because of COVID-era changes. When the pandemic meant more people wanted video games than the supplies of video games were available, retailers in Japan only allowed console and game purchases by lottery. Scientists found an unexpected experiment playing out in real time. Those who won the lottery got to play, and those who didn't, couldn't. A series of surveys produced the final results, showing that people who played tended to be in better mental shape than those who didn't. Now, that said, the social aspect of some multiplayer games might have helped in a unique time when people were much more isolated than usual. And even the study found it's still possible to overdo it. It found well-being scores started dropping among those who gamed more than three hours a day. And they fell even more as gaming time increased. Still, researchers say it's a sign that when used in moderation, video games can be a part of a mental health regimen to help combat stress, anxiety, loneliness, and isolation. Of course, there's more experts say you should consider, for example, choosing games that are age-appropriate and making sure gaming doesn't get in the way of other healthy habits and activities. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, struck a deal with publishing powerhouse Condé Nast yesterday. Condé Nast owns The New Yorker, GQ, and several other notable brands. 
and the deal allows articles published by those brands to be used in ChatGPT and the prototype for Search GPT. Condé Nast and ChatGPT say the deal will help maintain accuracy in AI while still compensating and crediting the original publication, including by linking to source articles. Lots of other major publishers have already signed deals with OpenAI, but there's another group led by the New York Times that sued the company last year. That group says articles were used without permission to train large language models. Then just this week, a group of authors made similar claims against Anthropic, which makes the ChatGPT competitor Claude. Three authors hope to lead a class action lawsuit against the company, saying Claude took information from copyrighted books without permission. Anthropic has yet to respond to this suit, but in the past, Anthropic and other tech companies have argued that training AI models fits into the so-called fair use doctrine that says copyrighted materials can be used for teaching, research, or transforming work into something different. So expect to hear more arguments like this as cases move through the courts. Well, now that college athletes are allowed to earn money, schools are taking some unique approaches to giving players a chance to profit off their playing days. For example, Oklahoma State University says this season it will become the first school to display QR codes on its football uniforms. The codes link to OSU's NIL general fund, as in name, image, and likeness. The school says while these QR codes will be too small to see from the stands, Fans watching on TV or seeing images posted to social media should be able to scan the code and donate to the fund. Then any money collected can be distributed to players. This is one change in a broader shift within college sports. NIL rules have completely transformed the landscape since they were introduced nationally in 2021, generating controversy along the way. On one hand, they allow athletes to make money. On the other hand, some coaches and school officials, including Oklahoma State's Mike Gundy, have called NIL a distraction. So OSU now hopes that offering a more passive way for athletes to make money will allow them to focus on sports. The college football season begins with the first few games this weekend. Well, now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. The number of scams targeting job seekers more than doubled last year. So now authorities are advising anyone looking for work to be extra cautious before sharing any personal or financial information. The nonprofit Identity Theft Resource Center says employment-related scams were up 118% in 2023, in part because of artificial intelligence and the continued popularity of remote work. These scams can take many forms. Usually, though, they start with a fake job listing, sometimes even on popular sites like LinkedIn. They may also use text messages to reach out to job hunters directly. And generative AI tends to help scammers make these listings and texts sound legitimate. Plus, the increasing prevalence of remote work since the pandemic era has made non-human interaction much more acceptable. So this may lead people to unwittingly give away sensitive financial information. The Federal Trade Commission has also warned about these threats. It says back in 2022, the typical victim lost $2,000 to job and business opportunity scams. Bottom line, authorities say... You shouldn't share your information unless you're sure it will be used legitimately. All right, thank you so much for joining us as part of your daily routine. We will catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.